Adobe Firefly is a new AI image generator that is currently in beta. I've been lucky enough to get access to it, so today I'll share my first impressions of this app and compare it to some of the competition out there. Other image generators don't have the same background in image generation that Adobe does, so it will be fun to see what the differences are. Like other AI image generators, Adobe Firefly allows users to create photos and art by providing a text prompt. The AI can generate images in a variety of styles, including realistic, painterly, abstract, and surreal. Users can also control other aspects of the image, such as color, lighting, composition, and aspect ratio. Let's try generating an image. In order to use this tool, you must join the beta or wait until Firefly becomes public. And of course, you'll need to be signed into your Creative Cloud account. This website sort of works on mobile, but it's recommended you use it on a desktop with Chrome, Safari, or Edge for the best experience. To generate an image, click on the Generate button for Text to Image. Next, at the bottom of the screen, enter a text prompt in the text box. I'll enter a mountain lake at sunset. Sometimes you'll want to be vague, and sometimes you'll want to be specific about what you ask for. I'd start basic and add words as needed. By default, I am getting art as my output, but I actually want a photo, so I will click on that and the images will automatically refresh. According to the FAQ, the images will refresh anytime you apply a new style to keep the images consistent between styles. Or in other words, certain images won't appear with certain styles. If you happen to see any images you really want to keep, download them before they get replaced. I'll go into more detail about downloading images in a bit. If you do not download an image, it won't be saved. Most image generators allow you to refresh to get new iterations, or you can elaborate more with your text prompt. But Firefly is unique in that it gives us several different properties we can use to fine tune the image output. First, I want the aspect ratio to be landscape, so I get a wider image. The images will regenerate when I do this to better fit the composition. If I want to inspect an image more closely, I can click on it to preview it. From a distance, the image might look great, but from close up, you can see the imperfections. Some imperfections are easily fixed in Photoshop, but it might be simpler just to try to generate a better image. You can also provide feedback on each image, which may help to train the AI to suggest better images. Next, I'll change the lighting to dramatic and refresh to apply that style. Now you can see that the contrast really increases, sort of like an HDR effect. I can also experiment with composition, but that will require a prompt with a subject that is more prominent. Let's change the prompt to add a subject to the scene. I'll choose tree in a field of grass. If I compare that to a result with a blurry background, you can see how these properties allow me to refine how the image was composed. In this case, blurry background actually made the foreground objects blurry. If I compare that to wide angle, I get sort of a wider panoramic shot. These composition properties don't always have an effect. In some cases, you might have better luck being more specific with your prompt. For example, if I want a view of a tree shot from above, I might need to say tree in a field of grass shot from above. Simplifying the prompt can sometimes help as well. For example, if I search for field of grass, I get better results when using composition to view it from different angles. I can also use color and tone to make the image grayscale, make the colors more vibrant, and so on. You'll notice that in most cases, you can only use one style from each category at a time. You can even remove styles or clear them all together. There is a show similar button in the top left of each image. This will give you iterations that more closely resemble the original image. Another way to guide Firefly in the right direction is to use the reference image feature. I'll ask for a photo of parrots on a jungle background. By designating one of these as the reference, I can have Firefly choose iterations that resemble that image. It sort of anchors some of the image content so that you can go on a tangent or mix styles. If I move the slider toward reference image, I'll get nearly identical iterations. If I move it toward prompt, I'll get more variation. All of these in-between steps serve as randomizers. I can even enter a slightly different prompt like photo of parrots on a volcano background, choose different styles, 
then blend between the two prompts using the slider. I'll need to remove the reference with the X when I'm done with it. As I mentioned earlier, you can download these images to your computer. When you do, it will prompt you to enable content credentials, which tags the image with information designating it as having been generated by AI. This is essential so we can differentiate genuine images from generated ones. Optionally, you can use the copy function to copy the image and paste it into Photoshop. This might be faster if you prefer saving these images as layers in a single document. You can only save generated images as a JPEG. No option for PNG means that Firefly does not support background transparency for these types of images. If you try to generate an image with a transparent background, like this apple, you'll get a checkerboard pattern. What I would recommend is to add white background or whatever color doesn't conflict with your subject, then use Photoshop to remove the background using the object selection tool. While Firefly is in beta, a watermark will be added to the bottom left, so I wouldn't waste too much time trying to generate a library of images until you can get them without the watermark. On that note, some of the other image generators offer online storage of your generated images. In the case of Dolly 2, this can be good because there are images that I may want to download at some point, but I don't have to download them all at once. However, the downside is that I cannot delete images, so the library can quickly become a lot to look through. Being able to save images to Creative Cloud and then download them later would definitely be an advantage. I'd also like to emphasize that all of these images have flaws. Clearly, these are not real parrots. And if I go back to the apples, none of these are real either. It's quite difficult to generate anything with AI that is 100% accurate. In particular, the stem on the apple is the wrong shape or length, and the shadows and highlights are often in the wrong place. At first glance, these look like apples. But let's be honest, would you eat any of these if someone offered one to you? Even Snow White wouldn't touch this. I wouldn't use any of these generated images without carefully inspecting and correcting them first, especially if you're relying on them to accurately depict something. If I tried to paint an apple using one of these as a reference and copied it exactly, my work would look amateurish no matter how photorealistically I was able to match the reference. Next, let's have some fun with this apple and choose art for the output. Now I get digital art rather than a photo. Let's choose a style now. These tend to be more abstract. You can apply multiple styles, but they may conflict with each other, so I'd be sure to remove the previous style before applying a new one. Let's try acrylic painting. That looks nice. Like something you might see in a thrift store, but not quite commercial level painting. Let's see it in watercolor now. Looks almost the same. I might need to add watercolor to my prompt. That's much better. I'd say these are good for inspiration, but I wouldn't try to pass them off as human made or sell them as is. Let's try the graphic output mode with a moose drinking from a river. I get something that looks like a vector, though when I download it, I get a flat image, not something I can edit. If I change to art, I don't get results that are much different. You can toggle back and forth between the modes to compare them. Art is a bit more detailed with gradients and shading, while graphic has flatter colors, but the style is still the same. None can be useful if the other modes are having too much of an influence on the results. Photo gives me dramatically different results with the animals in approximately the same poses. If these modes were better synchronized, this would be useful for downloading a reference image and matching inspirational styles. Again, I'd just like to point out that a real moose has very specific antlers. These generated animals have vastly different antlers. Depending on how complex the image is, this could be very time consuming to fix if you plan to use this output commercially. You're going to have more flexibility with something like a landscape or a texture rather than intricate objects like animals, plants, human-made objects, and sometimes people. Though Adobe Firefly performs much better than Dolly in terms of generating faces, other anatomy like hands are still quite flawed with too many fingers and other distortions. There are so many combinations of modes and prompts that I couldn't possibly show you them all. And that's the beauty of this. No matter how or what you create, you'll be able to do more with this tool. 
It could be as simple as inspiration or as complex as creating a reference image or a template. There's more that Adobe Firefly can do or might be able to do. You can generate text using a prompt to create a visual style. Here you can see I can create my name in paint splats or pencil shading. I find the styles to be a little too psychedelic. Hopefully there will be a way to control the intricacy of the style in the future. I will point out that generating text does give you the option of saving as PNG with a transparent background. You can also choose to fill in the background with a solid color. There are quite a few more features that are in an experimental phase right now. These aren't accessible in the beta, but I'll just run through them real quick. Coming soon, you can recolor vectors from a text prompt. I suppose you could say green apple to turn an apple green. This would definitely be more efficient than manually changing the colors, but we'll have to see how the output looks since color is quite subjective. The experimental in-painting feature would allow users to remove or replace objects in an image. This would be done by highlighting an area and then providing a text prompt that describes the desired change. For example, you could say remove the cat from the image or replace the cat with a dog. I have tried a similar feature in Dolly 2, which can be hit or miss. However, given the differences in quality I have seen in Adobe Firefly so far, I bet Adobe's version is going to be quite good. Another potential feature would be to allow users to upload custom images to train the AI. For example, I could upload images of a specific object or style to generate alternate images from it. You could even manipulate your own intellectual property, such as artwork, to make variations of it. Currently, many AI generators are limited to their own data set. For instance, I cannot get Firefly or Dolly to make art in the style of Aaron Rutten because they aren't trained on my work. But in the future, I might be able to do that. I think it would be fun to explore how I could make art in that way. The text to vector feature could allow users to create vector graphics from text. This feature would be similar to text to image. However, the output would give you a vector file that would be editable. So that moose I generated earlier would have some layers separate and I could more easily fix the antlers. It's unclear whether each object will be a separate layer or whether it will just be segmented by color. Hopefully it's by object. The extend image feature looks as if it allows you to extend an image to alter its aspect ratio. For example, you could say make the image wider and add some trees. The AI would then generate an extension of the image to include those details. The proposed 3D to image feature in Adobe Firefly could allow users to convert 3D models into images using a text prompt to describe the style. Users would need to provide a 3D model to Firefly, which would then generate an image of the model in a desired style. It's not clear whether you would have to build the model first and how you would build it. I suppose this would be geared toward 3D artists who already know how to make models. Text to pattern actually already exists in Firefly. At least I had success generating seamless patterns. The only problem is that the images are watermarked, but eventually you'll be able to remove those when the beta is over. I look forward to this because I've tried to get seamless patterns from Dolly 2 without any success. The text to brush feature in Adobe Firefly could allow you to create brushes from text. For example, you could say create a brush of evergreen trees and the AI would create a brush based on that. I think this one sounds more impressive than it would be once implemented because a brush is more than just a dab. You need to choose the correct properties for the brush to make it usable. So all this feature would be doing is creating a dab from your source image and perhaps automatically importing it into Photoshop or Fresco. If the AI could choose optimal brush settings, that would be impressive. The sketch to image feature in Adobe Firefly sounds interesting. It could allow users to turn their sketches into high quality images. A basic sketch would be provided to the AI, which would then generate an image with much more form, color, and detail. I also see a problem with this one. You'd have to know how to draw a face to get a good result. I think this feature would be great for artists, but for the average person without a background in art, it might be easier just to generate a face another way. If this were more of a tool to help shape a photographic face, that could be an interesting way to use this as well. This could be a great way to create your own references or characters. The experimental text to template feature could make it possible to create templates from text. 
Simply provide a text prompt that describes the template you'd like, and Firefly does the rest. For example, you could say, create a flyer for my band, and you'd get the correct size with some placeholder text and a generated layout, complete with images. That's all that is planned for Adobe Firefly at this point. Let's move on to discuss some of the strengths and weaknesses of Firefly compared to similar AI image generators. First, the strengths. Adobe Firefly can generate some of the highest quality images I have seen so far. According to the FAQ, the max size is 2000 by 2000 pixels, but I was only able to generate images that were around 1700 pixels on the longest side when using the widescreen mode. The image quality is excellent in terms of sharpness and clarity. Unlike many other image generators, you can choose from a large set of styles and other customizations. This alone really sets Firefly apart from the competition. Most importantly, you can customize the aspect ratio. Many image generators limit you to a square image. If you are generating text, you can choose to save an image with background transparency. I hope this extends to regular image generation as well. The Adobe Firefly user interface is intuitive and easy to use, though the large number of controls can be a lot to scroll through. Another strength is that Adobe Firefly will likely be integrated into Creative Cloud and perhaps individual Adobe products like Photoshop. If you already pay for Creative Cloud, Firefly might be included, which means you wouldn't have to pay per image for something like Dolly. And finally, the images generated by Adobe Firefly are the most consistent I have seen. Each iteration closely resembles the others. However, this can quickly feel like a limitation because it becomes difficult to get enough variety in the images. That sort of makes this a con as well. I'd love some more control over whether I see all unique images or go on a tangent. Now let's explore Adobe Firefly's weaknesses. First, the styles and other properties seem to have little to no effect on certain types of images. I get really excited when I imagine how a property might affect my prompt, but then nothing changes and I'm let down. To be fair, it could be that I need to use a different or more specific prompt to get the effect I want. Perhaps some of the properties and styles that aren't going to have an impact should be grayed out or labeled so users don't waste their time or feel like Firefly isn't responding. The next weakness is that Firefly can sometimes generate images that are not what I was expecting. The same can be said for many image generators, but Firefly seems to miss the mark by a lot more depending on the prompt. If I were paying per image for these results, I would be pretty angry. My next complaint is that Firefly's default art style is often very surreal. The images can be almost disturbing to look at. I think Dolly does a much better job at showing restraint, though it has its fair share of disturbing images as well. And last, Adobe Firefly is only for non-commercial use while still in beta. That means you can't really do anything with the output. I would have loved to use some Firefly images in a commercial video I released earlier in the month, but I had to rely on Dolly instead. I don't like being teased. I want to dig in and use these tools in a real world situation. When you see all of the creative fields that could be affected by this one app, it really is exciting. For some of you, it might feel terrifying, but I don't believe AI will replace creative people. It will empower them. What I look forward to is that artists will be able to create visuals that were not possible before. Whether they use generated images as is, use them as reference, or mix them with other resources, our tools for creativity have increased substantially. I get that not everyone is as optimistic as I am, so I just want to share my perspective as someone who started my career doing freelance illustration, graphic design, photography, video, and more. First, if Adobe Firefly enables someone to make their own images instead of hiring a designer, that's great. Hiring a designer isn't always easy or cost-effective, and clients need options. We are living in the creator economy where someone like myself has to be a graphic designer, video editor, and much more. I can't afford to pay someone to do all those tasks, and if I can do them myself faster, that's a huge advantage. I'm not trying to pass this stuff off as my own human-generated art. I'm just trying to produce some video thumbnails or some other mundane task. Who cares if a client can make their own seamless pattern of lemons? There are already hundreds of stock images out there and tutorials of how to do it yourself. 
For more complex images, it can take a lot of time to generate and regenerate images until you find one that sort of works. If you're lucky enough to find a good candidate, you still need to correct it or maybe even add to it. If you're unlucky, you'll generate hundreds of images and still not even get close to what you want. And at that point, it might just be cheaper or faster to hire a human just to get it done the way you want. In other cases, there will be clients who don't want to put in any effort, and they might hire a designer to generate an image, then customize it to their taste. If it's sparing you from the tedious work of drawing lemons that anyone else can draw, and you're getting paid the same hourly rate, why complain? You'll do more jobs faster rather than fewer jobs slowly. And in my experience, bidding, landing, and completing several smaller jobs is easier than one big expensive job. I have spent hours drawing up concepts that just got thrown away. Why not let AI help the client choose a direction on their own time, and then send it to you to turn into a finished product? You can do what you want with it. Redraw it, manipulate it, add to it. If that's what the client wants and you can both be happy with the result, then I don't see an issue with this process. For those of you who are worried that someone with no design or illustration skills will take your job, I don't think that's likely either. You really are selling yourself short if you think being an artist is just the images you output. If you are successful right now, 90% of that is due to your business and relationship skills and 10% to your portfolio. A designer that is fully dependent on AI is going to disappoint a lot of clients when they can't customize a design or create iterations that look consistent. What if the client wants characters and other assets for a board game? There's just no way to handle something like that with AI. AI is simply rolling the dice, whereas you are capable of making what the client wants with intention in a style that is consistent and predictable. It would be very difficult to build a portfolio made exclusively of generated images because the style would vary so much. It would be obvious to a client where the art was coming from. I doubt experienced clients are going to pay more for less since jobs are often calculated per hour. I can't imagine a world where a client pays the same for an as-is generated image that they can generate themselves as they would for something made by a person. They would expect a discount because that's all they can afford which is why they chose AI over human design in the first place. There's also the liability of copying protected content. There are consequences for both the client and the designer if you violate a trademark or copyright. Is someone with no industry experience going to know or care about that? According to Adobe Firefly's terms of use, that responsibility is on you. How about inaccuracy? Let's say I sell a client a moose I generated earlier for their logo. If two months later, someone lets them know their moose has weird antlers, they're going to be upset with me as a designer. Especially so if they have committed to printing that image on products or advertising. And let's not forget, these examples for the experimental products could be mock-ups. I'm sure they're based on some actual results, but they could just be best case examples of what Firefly can do. We already know how sloppy the output of AI can be. In the future, you might be able to generate vectors or 3D models, but they will also require a lot of correction to make them usable. It's not like designers are going to generate something and within seconds be selling it online. It takes a lot more work than that to complete concepts into finished products, then advertise and sell them. If you're generating images for clients, but you're also correcting mistakes, adapting the images, adding to them, and checking for copyright issues, then you're doing just as much as a designer who opted not to use AI. If you can market yourself, satisfy clients, and develop a business, you deserve to create designs your own way without any judgment. I believe it will matter more how well you can utilize generated images. There will be good AI designers and bad ones. Those who try to sell images with flaws will be labeled as amateurs, while those who spend a lot of time and effort to get good results will advance. Just compare my first AI-generated videos with the more recent ones, and you can see how much I've learned about cleaning up and combining the images to make them more effective. I'm only able to do that because I have Photoshop skills and a background in art and design. And there are people out there who can do an even better job than I can of making a finished product. Point being, no one is going to succeed just because a tool is available to them. That's not to mention that there will always be clients who don't want an AI image. Digital art was supposed to have killed traditional art, but I sure do see a lot of it going on.
If most artists and designers adopt image generation, you'll have a lot less competition if you create human-made products. Though even that term seems ridiculous considering how much we rely on technology to do anything commercial. I don't believe anyone is taking anyone else's job here. There are just additional avenues you can explore as a creator or client. Overall, Adobe Firefly is a promising new tool that will fundamentally change how we create images and other forms of media. I'm excited to see how it develops in the future. If you want to learn more about AI-generated images and how you can use them as tools to create or inspire art and design, subscribe to this channel and check out my other videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.